Okay, welcome to Mr. C's shop. Again, we're in Ben Salem High School, and today we're going to talk about table saws. Okay, Ben Salem was kind enough to buy us a brand new table saw last year. We're fortunate enough to have what's called a rips, uh, uh, sorry, a saw stop table saw. What's unique about a saw stop is if you get your finger in the blade when it's running, it will jam a piece of aluminum into the back of the blade and stop the blade within two teeth. You will actually get a small cut that might draw blood. Won't cut your fingers off, won't cut your hand. Very nice safety feature. And in addition to that, the highest quality saw I've seen in years. Very, very nice tool. We're going to go over and show you how to make it work and how to run it safely. It's a 220 volt machine, and as you can tell by the plug, it's four prongs. There we are. Plug it back in, find the one that is the key. Plug it in and twist it just slightly. Now I'm plugged in ready for business, except it won't run yet. Because this is a saw stop, turning it on won't do anything. Put the on switch on, you'll see I have a green light and a red light. This machine's energizing. When the red light stops, the machine, there. Now it will turn on by pulling the paddle. Now if you look at the paddle, it's a two position pull. In the first position, the machine will come on and go right back off. Make a liar there. It wasn't pulled far enough. You cannot restart the machine until the blinking light stops. So pull it out all the way when you go to start it. The machine is on. I'm having a problem with my cut. All I have to do is kick it. Okay. This wheel here will raise and lower the saw blade. And this will anchor it in position. So if I turn it in this direction, clock, counterclockwise, I'll raise the blade up to its highest position, which I don't really want my students to be doing. The correct position is the top of the blade should be about a quarter of an inch above the workpiece. So this will lower it up and down. Now, this is the scale for the tilt. Some would call it a bevel. And this is the wheel that operates it. So if I was to, see right now we're on a 10, a two degree tilt, which most people would not want. We loosen it up here. Oh, somebody tightened it up. I got some strong guys. Okay, counterclockwise, and we'll set that on to a zero tilt. So now the blade is exactly 90 degrees up and down. So you can see it will go all the way out to a 45 degree tilt. Okay, and I will anchor that in position. I like it here. This is the blade guard. I insist that my students operate it in the down position, though it can certainly be raised. What's unique about this particular blade guard is this is the vacuum hose. The sawdust comes up in this direction and gets sucked out into the vacuum collection system, which is really a nice attachment for this saw. In addition to that, if I chose to, I can pick this throat plate up. First, I'm going to make sure my saw is in the off position. I insist that my students unplug the machine any time their hands are on or at the blade. Loosens the attachment. And this, called the riving knife, will come right out. Here we go. OK. You can see the riving knife comes right out. This, I'll explain the riving knife in a minute. Sometimes, if you're going to rip a very small piece of wood, you put the blade back down, put the lever back down, put the throat plate back on. If I want to rip a very small piece of wood, I could do that only if the riving knife is out of the way. My students are not allowed to do that. If they need to take that blade off, that device off, they have to come and get me before they can turn the saw on. Now, we'll just put that back on. To put the riving knife and blade guard back into position, you have to hold the kickback devices up and they've got a little slot that they fit into. That way you can get the throat plate back on. There's the slot right there. There, now they're both in position. Put it back into the position here. There we go. And attach the lever. 
You can see I'm close to the blade, so my saw is unplugged. Put the throat plate back in place, push the front piece down, and release the kickback devices. Okay, I want to talk about these little pieces of steel right here, one on either side. These are the anti-kickback devices. It's designed so when you push your, feet, your material into it, if you have a saw kickback, you can see that bites right into the wood and prevents it from hitting the operator. This is particularly important if you're ripping small pieces of material. Since the saw blade goes towards you, if there's an accident, it flicks the material back towards the operator just like that. And uh, I've seen serious bruises and impalements. Okay, this is called the rip fence, commonly called the fence. And this is the lock lever, lock knob, which slides forth and back like this, always stays parallel to the saw blade. And the way to set it up, you can either measure your material here, lock the fence into position, or you can measure it here. We want four and three quarters, set it up right there, lock the fence into position. It's important that you lock the fence, otherwise you're freehand cutting. There's no freehand cutting on any table saw. So once it's locked in position, my fence will not move. Now, this particular machine, I'm cutting plywood, you can come all the way out here, I can make 48 or even 52 inch cuts. That's more than half the size of a piece of plywood. I don't generally use it. Most of it stays on the table itself. So again, if I want four and three quarters, I'll go for four and a half right there. Position it accurately. Tighten the fence up so it won't move. And when I cut, my board stays up tight against the fence. That will ensure an accurate cut and a safe cut. Okay. You see this is the splitter. What this does, you watch when I cut, the board will go on either side of this and this maintains the thickness of the cut. I don't want the board to come back together, which it will in wet wood, and bind against the saw and cause a kickback. That ensures that it stays open. And again, these are my kickback pawls, which will also help prevent kickback. Kickbacks are painful, I have to tell you. They hurt. I've never had one. Okay, I want to show my technique for ripping a board. The left hand is critical. I anchor my thumb on the edge of the saw. I take my ring finger and I push the board towards the fence. I use my index finger to hold it down. I use my right hand, the thumb behind the board, my fingers on the fence, and the right hand holding, the right index finger holding the board down. Sometimes I can use two. Now watch how I do this. It's very important to anchor your left hand and it does not move towards the saw blade. I turn the saw on, anchor my hand, push it into the blade. Step to the side. Push the board all the way off. Turn the saw off. And as with all saws in my shop, I expect my students to keep their hands, their fingers, a palm width away from all the blades, approximately four inches. You can see if I'm over here, I'm four inches away. If my fence is up close, there is no way I can be four inches away up here. So let's make a couple more cuts. Watch again. Anchor my thumb, anchor my left hand. It does not go towards the blade. Step aside, push it right through. Now why do I step aside? Because this guy right here is the one that'll hurt you. Catches on the blade, comes flying back. And if you're sitting back here, that's a groin shot right there. Most guys don't like that. Now, for ripping narrow boards, here, we're going to rip these about three quarters of an inch or an inch. 
To rip a narrow board an inch or so, you're probably going to have to raise up the guard. Now these guys are your friends. This is a push stick. You can't put your fingers in here. Don't even think of it. You might get by with your hand out here, but I like these. Now watch this technique. When you get it in here, this goes right here. Let's open it up a little bit so I can show another part. If you're pushing it here, the push stick goes right in the middle, not against the fence, not close to the blade, right in the middle so you don't torque the board. Now, three quarters of an inch and here we go. Now, this stick goes right here in the corner and then push them all the way through. Turn the saw off. Were my hands within four inches of that blade? Not a chance. This tool we call the miter bar. Some call it a miter head. A miter is simply an angled cut going against the grain. If it's a 90 degree cut, like this here, that would be called a cross cut. I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. If I loosen it here and twisted it, I can get as much as a 60 degree angle cut. I can also do this on the chop saw. So I have my students do these kind of cuts on the other tool. I don't want to get my students confused between rip cuts and cross cuts. They seem to have a difficult time with that. So 45 degree cuts, I have 90 up to 60. Certainly can do 30, 25 do anything I want. So we'll just demonstrate a cross cut, then we'll do a miter cut. Again, position it where you want it, tighten the miter bar up, gently feed it into the blade. Never freehand cut any piece of wood on a table saw. This would be a freehand cut. I'm not good enough, and you're not good enough, and the chance of injury on this is very high. It's going to come back and hit the operator. So here's a demonstration and we're going to cut this knot right off. Put the blade down, put the guard down, turn it on, hold the tool firmly. I got my position my thumb behind the miter bar. My fingers are pulling the wood into the miter bar. Nothing is hanging out to get cut. Except the board. Go all the way through the tool. You bring the piece back. You can see, it gives us a really nice cut. And that is 90 degrees relative to this surface here. If I want to make a miter cut, say we want to go for a, oh, come on. Here we'll make a 45 degree miter. Oh, I guess it's right there. Okay, again, position that gets yourself all set up before we start. Take a good miter here. Okay, turn the tool on. Again, notice my hand. My thumb is pulling with my fingers. I'm pulling the board into the miter bar. Sometimes I can push extra with my other hand. Cut. Follow through. Now, you bet. That's a dangerous piece. Shut the saw off. Don't reach for it, don't pull it out. Let that sit, don't stand behind it. That's the one that'll hurt. You can see, I can pull that off now. If I was doing a picture frame or moldings around a door, I'd have a nice little mold. So again, that's a 45 degree miter cut. Now the table saw, because it rotates towards the operator, you'll notice, I've got a nice clean cut on this surface here. That's because the blade cuts this surface first and it breaks out on this surface here. It's a little bit rougher. And you can see that clearly when I, this is how the piece was, nice clean cuts. When I flip it over, you can see there's kind of a feather edge on here. That's where it breaks out. Now this is a pretty good blade. It's nice and sharp. And I still can't prevent that. I'd have to sand that a little bit. Okay, as you can all see, this tool has a vacuum hose. It connects to it right here. This one is set up, so you just got to push it on. I use that for several tools. If the vacuum hose is not hooked up, 
I would like my students to not use the tool. Dust is a problem in all wood shops, and this is how we do our best to control it. And the advantage of this is, if I turn it on, when I go to clean up, all I have to do, the four inch tube, cleanup can be done a whole lot easier. There. And just simply slide it back on and turn the vacuum off. Simple. I hope you all enjoy the table saw. It's a great tool. It's the heart of all wood shops and we've got a beauty. Hope you learn to use it safely and accurately.